Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we don't need to be that large, but we're going to be large enough like this. Um, there is something that you all need to understand. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this because it deserves to be talking about, talking about, <laughs> talking about. I am tired. Okay. I just finished in this late evening and everybody knows I don't do well in the evenings. Okay answering 75 emails <sighs> because they were piling up and piling up and if i let them go past 75 ladies and gentlemen there's going to be quora i still have all of these documents that i have to complete including the document for our mortgage people so there is a lot going on and there's a lot of distractions and i'm doing the best that i can to keep from being distracted I've been able to explain to the staff what I'm going through and how things are going to get rough, rough for me from this point forward. Uh, that being the case, been through it before. Um, and we will get through it this time, champ. Look, a couple of things that we need to talk about. I just did a video this morning helping people to understand about what's going on in our world, what's going on in the universe, what's going on with this whole idea that there is no God. And some people are going to appreciate it. As a matter of fact, a couple of people asked me if I would do more videos like that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is based on the fact that my God allows me to remember scripture and to be able to explain it with, when it makes sense to people, as opposed to arguing with people. I don't argue about scripture ever. There's no reason to, because if you don't take scriptures for what they say, then that's not me you're arguing with. Go ahead and argue with the author. But that being said, understand this, people. You must understand what's going on in the background. It doesn't matter if the idiot sitting on a bench understands it. It doesn't matter if the idiot wearing a badge understands it. That's not the point. But you can't be going off trying to prove this stuff to people because that's not going to work. But you can slap them in the face with it. So the first thing y'all need to understand is you want to utilize the Federal Reserve Act, Section 401, Subsection 18, Paragraph Number 6. This is still in effect. The only thing they got rid of was circulating notes. It's no longer circulating notes. They're now called Federal Reserve notes. They used to be called Federal Reserve Bank notes. Okay. They also used to be called, pay attention, National Bank notes. But they're not called those things anymore. They are now called Federal Reserve notes. Now, what does it say here? Pay attention. Upon deposit with the U.S. Treasury of the United States or any Federal Reserve Bank, you can deposit it with the Treasury or the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. But hold on, pay attention. The deposit directly with the Treasury they got rid of, ladies and gentlemen, when they amended the act. You can still deposit it with the Federal Reserve. That's what Section 16 is. But let's continue of any direct obligation of the United States or of any notes, draft bills of exchange, bank acceptance, trade acceptances, and that are acquired by the Federal Reserve or any Federal Reserve Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens? What happens when it's deposited? Well, they get paid. Okay. Oh, you don't, you didn't see that part. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, I ain't got to read everything. I'm just going to show it to you. They get paid. It says that they have the right. They are entitled to receive from the comptroller of the currency notes. Okay. But hold on. Make sure y'all understand because some people don't understand. Let's read this in its context. When such circulating notes are issued against the security of obligations of the United States, the amount of such circulating notes shall be equal to the value of Direct obligation to the United States, so deposited as securities. Now, pay attention. And when issued against the security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank of acceptance, trade acceptance, acquired under provision of this act, the amount of thereof shall be equal to not more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, these notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank of acceptance, trade acceptances, so deposited as securities. Such notes, pay attention, what notes? Pay attention, what notes? Well, we got to go back to where the statement was made the first time because we got to read it in context. Okay, so what note? Such notes, drafts, bills of exchange. So such notes shall be 
the obligation of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring, receiving the same. Wait a minute, hold on. That's not what it says, huh? Does it say that? Any Federal Reserve no, a bank making such deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the control of the currency. Ladies and gentlemen, upon deposit, them receiving this from you. Pay attention. And now it says such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank. So they're receiving it. Now that they've received it, they've now taken receipt of it. Now it becomes their obligation to fulfill the obligation. What obligation is that? Oh, you didn't know? <sighs> Pay attention. Shall be receivable at par. Par with what? What is it parring with? In all parts of the United States. But that's where a par is. Parts. Par. Arts. So that's the par, huh? No. It shall be receivable at par. Equal value. In all parts of the United States. For the same purposes of national bank notes. What were national bank notes used for? They were construed as legal tender. Go ahead, do your research. For the same purposes as national bank notes, legal tender. So your promissory note, when you gave it to the bank, put your signature on it, that became legal tender. They accepted it as legal tender because it must be receivable in all parts of the United States at par with national bank notes. And it is redeemable in lawful money of the U.S. That's why they give it to the Treasury, and the Treasury issues them Federal Reserve notes. Is Federal Reserve notes lawful money? No. But the Treasury gives that to them in exchange for lawful money. That's the agreement between the parties. You don't believe me? Let me show you that they get it in exchange for lawful money. This, These are not my words, people. I have my words. They're mine. These are not mine. The money will be worth 100 cents on a dollar. Why? Because under the new law, the money is issued to the banks in return for government obligations, bills of exchange, draft notes, trade acceptances, and bankers' acceptances. What's going on here? Well, the bankers' notes, drafts, bills of exchange, trade acceptances are all at par with government obligations. They're the same value. That's why they're worth 100 cents on the dollar because they're backed by the credit of the nation. And because you get to do this, there is a supposed mortgage on your homes and your property because that's what you're purchasing with your promissory notes. And that mortgage remains on your property until the government offsets that debt. till you deposit it and they offer them a settlement in it. So let's continue if you guys don't mind. It is important that you understand what's going on here because many people don't understand so let's finish. And shall be redeemable in lawful money of the United States upon presentation to the United States Treasury or at the bank of issue. What issue? An issue. Uh, what issue? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the bank that you deposited it, deposited it, 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 it the promissory note with. Now, hold on. These are not my words. Okay. These are not my words. So you got to go here. This is the most important part. This is Section 403. Now, this is Section 13 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended. Now, they are adding this. This is, goes to the final paragraph, following the new paragraph. See, by adding to the end thereof, this new paragraph, subject to such limitations and restrictions and regulations, pay attention, as the Federal Reserve Board may prescribe, any Federal Reserve Bank making may make advancements to any individual. You are an individual. Let's forget these other ones. On the promissory notes of each or such individual. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to receive Federal Reserve notes and advancement. 12 USC 411. Go ahead and read it. Only Federal Reserve banks can receive advancements. For no other purpose are they authorized. Well, according to this, you are an individual bank. Let's see if par partnerships and corporations is in the, the definition. Hold on. Partnerships and corporations. <laughs> Let's go here. I see associations. 
I see associations. I see trust companies. Uh oh, corporations. Wait, do we see partnerships? Well, look at here. Y'all included because it's got individuals such as persons engaged in the business of banking business. See, banking business. So let's go back up and see what the intentions of Congress was and how the president had authorized the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are an individual. You can receive advancements from the Federal Reserve. That's what the application and everything is all about. Stop guessing, people. Stop trying to figure out new ways of doing new stupid things. Use this. This is still the law. They have never amended this section. Go ahead and look at the Federal Reserve Act and see if you see this paragraph that they say has to be in there. See if you see that paragraph in the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because eyes coming. Hold on. Because eyes coming. This is it right here. In no event. Now, this is Section 16. So let's go up to 13, section 13, section, section, like section eight, section 11, you went too far. Mama, he's always going too far. Well, he's tired, honey. He ain't tired. He's sitting up here still talking. If he's tired, he shut up and go to sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. I said that out loud again, huh? I'm sorry, mama. No, I'm, I'm sorry, mama. You know, uh, 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 uh. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to make you cry. But now I'm cleaning out my closet, okay? I said, I'm sorry, mama. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, I, this is section 13. Section 13. Now, we're going to see something right here, okay? Because y'all just need to understand section 13. Section 13, keep going. We're going to go all the way up to number one. Because I'm still number one, 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 one. There we still section 13. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Federal, the, the Federal M M M M M Reserve Act. And we're not looking for no discounts. See, they keep talking about discounts. We ain't looking for no discounts. we looking for advancements. Okay? That's what we're looking for because that's what we're interested in. Uh oh, that's, uh oh, we went too far. That's 12 8. 12A, went too far. Governing principles, receipts. This is section 13. So let's do, it doesn't say section 13. Why did it say section 13? Participating banks, where is section 13? Come on now, I saw 12A. Okay, that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. But this says section 13. There it is right at the top. I didn't even read that part right there. I'm sorry, y'all just have to excuse me. Now, National bank notes, national bank notes, national bank notes. Let's read this to see what it says. And then we're going to let y'all get on about y'all business. Any Federal Reserve Bank may receive from any of its membered banks or other depository institution or from the United States deposits of current funds in lawful money, national bank notes, Federal Reserve notes, checks, drafts, payable upon presentation or other items, and also for collection, maturing notes and bills, or solely for the purpose of exchange or of collections. Notes and bills solely for the purpose of exchange or collection may receive from other Federal Reserve Banks deposit of current funds and lawful money, national bank notes, checks upon or checks upon other Federal Reserve Banks or checks or drafts payable upon presentation within the district or other items and maturing notes, bills payable within its district and solely for the purpose of exchange or collection may receive from any non-membered bank or any trust company or other depository institution deposits of current funds in lawful monies, national bank notes, Federal Reserve, Fed, Fed, Federal Reserve notes, Checks, drafts, payable upon presentation, or other items, or maturing notes or bills of exchange, provided such non member bank or trust company or other depository institution maintains with the Federal Reserve Bank of its district a balance of such amount as the board determines taken into account items in transit. Services provided by the Federal Reserve Bank or other factors as the board may deem appropriate, provided further that nothing in this or any other section of this act 
shall be construed as prohibiting you, a member bank or a non-member bank or other depository institution, from making reasonable charges to be determined and regulated by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, but in no case shall exceed 10 cents or per $100. 10% is what that's saying. Or fraction thereof, based on the total of checks and drafts presented at any one time for collections or payment of checks and drafts, remissions thereof by exchange, but no such charges shall be made against the Federal Reserve Bank. Whew, I am so glad they said all that. Now look at all this other stuff right here. I want y'all to pay attention to this so that y'all get what's going on here. You see all this? This Oh, there's that 90-day thing. See? 90 days, maturing 90 days, notes, drafts, bills, admitted, discount, blah, blah, 90 days. Okay, hold on now. We ain't finished, y'all. Hold on, because that's coming. Look at that. They have all of this junk here, but you know what they don't have? Y'all can see it, don't y'all? Let's go here. There's a little paragraph that I think this paragraph might have something to do with it. Provides for an amendment to the third undersigned paragraph of 13 by striking out for individuals, partnerships, and corporations. Look at that. They struck out individuals, partnerships, and corporations, inserting for any participant in any program or facility with broad-based eligibility. Such an amendment probably should have been to strike out for individuals, partnerships, and corporations and insert such new text, but was executed above to reflect the probable intent of Congress. Ah, they got rid of individuals, corporation. Now look, it says public law. Excuse me? Public law. Ladies and gentlemen, public law, that's not a law. Understand, the Federal Reserve Act is not a public law. So it provides for an amendment to the third under undesignated paragraph of Section 13 by striking out for individuals, partnerships, and corporations. Now, I want you guys to hold on a second. This is not the official Federal Reserve Act. You understand, this is the Federal Reserve Act provided by the Federal Reserve. That's why they have brackets, okay? But what y'all need to get, because this is this paragraph right here, this paragraph right here, okay? What they they, they, they doing is they telling y'all they took out individuals, partnerships, and corporations. Hold on. The only problem is they can't take out individuals, partnerships, and corporations. You see, that's still the law. They've never got, this is, pay attention, a presumption. Such an amendment probably should have been to strike out, but it wasn't, it didn't strike out, should have been to strike out. But no, what they did, they replaced it, inserting any participant in any program or facility with broad-based eligibility. So, ladies and gentlemen, Nobody else ain't going to do this for y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going through the wrong thing. I apologize. Oh, by the way, I never read that paragraph before. This is my first time. Y'all see what I did? I told y'all, let's look at that because something said something was fishy. Something looked fishy. So I read this paragraph because I knew it might meant something. Okay, but no, 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 no. Hold on. Not there. There. No, not there. Where is my Federal Reserve Act? Is the federal. Where's the F at? Where the F is the F at? Oh, no, that's the circular. Oh, no, 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 no. Da, 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 new deal. Where's the new deal? The new deal. There's the new deal. Let's get back here so you guys understand. To show you what the intent of Congress was, they have any individual partnership or corporation and such individual partnership or corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to understand. They knew what their intent was, so that's why they couldn't take this out. You take this out, and you violate the terms of the agreement. What terms of the agreement would they violate? Right here. The third. The other gives supreme authority to the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States to impound all the gold in the United States in the hand of individuals. See, individuals, corporations, and companies. Ladies and gentlemen, that's individuals, corporations, and partnerships. Please understand, individuals, corporations, and partnerships had to surrender their gold. Not the banks, just the individuals, corporations, and partnerships. They had to surrender their gold. Well, if they had to surrender their gold, it was in exchange for, what was the exchange for? It was in exchange for the new money. What new money? Oh, you didn't see? The new deal provided for a, where's my new money at? Hold on. Let's go down. Ooh, 
boy, there is a new money. I need to see the new money. Where's the new money at? I know he says new money, new money, new, 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 new money. Wait, it's here someplace. I don't see the new money. Hold on, it's up here then. Not there. Not there. Provides for a new money. I don't see the new money thing. Huh. Let's do that. I'm going to put in new money in the search. I know it's here, and I got it highlighted because that was important for it to say new money. N E W M O N E Y. Remember, the new money, uh oh, that was order. I don't need order no more. Oh no, we don't need no more order. There it is right there. Woo! Okay, I understand just how this new money is to be handled. To understand just how this new money is to be handled. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the new money? See, the last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new hachoo money. Okay, what's the new money? Well, he's about to tell us. <sighs> Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States, of all contract obligations in the United States or any notes because they're on par with each other, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptances, trade acceptances, okay, and so forth. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations are deposited as security and gold. That's why it's collateral. That's why it is the security for the reserve notes. And they're placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent, the local Federal Reserve agent. So he explains, Mr. Siegel, exactly what they mean. Oh, this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve Bank notes and not Federal Reserve notes. Now Federal Reserve notes. Amended June 12, 1945. And the security back of it are the obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and Baker's acceptances outlined in the section the gentleman referred to. They're explaining to you exactly what the act is saying. What part of the act are they reading? Mama, what part of the act are they reading? They're reading this part of the act, people, right here. Which is why you need to go back and read that your note is legal tender. It is on par with government obligations, which is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. It is on par with the United States government and their junk. It is lawful money because it's a medium of exchange. I told you guys, we're getting ready to highlight this and go on into everybody's coat. Whew, I'm glad I got this to y'all because I know so many of y'all just still ain't going to understand it. So that's why we put this online. We put this online so you can have it. We've been putting this stuff online for over a year and a half. Told y'all, if you knew that your promissory note was legal tender, hold on. It didn't say legal tender, homie. Well, go ahead and do your research on what national bank notes are. Because your notes are at par with national bank notes. National bank notes are legal tender. Your notes are on par with that. Hold on now. Y'all not understanding, so I'm going to help y'all understand. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Government obligations are obligations of the Federal Reserve when deposited with the Federal Reserve. So are your notes because your notes have gold and they are security. Why? Because that was the intent of Congress. Got to go. Wait, do we have to go up for this one? I think we have to go up. Yep, we go up right here. In the case of a deposit of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptances, Federal Reserve banks may issue Federal Reserve notes. To the amount of 90% of the value of such securities. This provision affords a plan of constructive expansion and currency of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, there's applause. When y'all get a chance to read what this was all for, when y'all get a chance to read what they were talking about, y'all will be amazed at how much y'all have given up. You don't have to be beautiful to turn me out on. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to acquiesce every five minutes. You can go to court with your promissory note that has a pay to the order stamp on it and tell the court, explain yourself. This right here documents delivery of collateral and security, and it documents payment. According to the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraph Number 2, because this junk wasn't timely dishonored, it must be considered satisfaction and accord. We'll be talking about this more in the future, 
under 25 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Please, y'all, has a good day because I've got to go to sleep. Got a long day tomorrow. More paperwork. Goodbye. <laughs>